<laughs> oh, I hear something. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your patience during our little technical difficulty here. Okay, so we're going to get started now with the project. Again, we're just using 12 gauge soft wire and I'm using gold fill. You can also use sterling silver, rose gold fill. There's like brass, bronze, copper. Um, you can also use plated base metal wire because this does not require any heat or soldering. So you don't have to worry about ruining the finish of the wire, okay? So the first part, we're going to just have the wire and I will just get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut my wire to a set length, okay? Um, the end of the finished bracelet will get a little bit shorter because of the loop and the hook. So you want this section here to be about the length of the bracelet you want plus an inch or so. So I'm gonna start with eight and a half inches of wire and we'll see what our finished length turns out to be, okay? So I'm gonna cut eight and a half inches of wire. Because this is 12 gauge wire, you need a little bit heavier duty cutter than your normal jewelry cutters. So I'm going to show you that in the screen. Okay. So the cutter that I'm gonna use is a Kaba cutter. This one cuts up to 10 gauge wire. Um, the nice thing is it cuts to 10 gauge wire, but the only thing is its tip is not super sharp. So you wouldn't wanna use it for cutting like really close. So this is more for just heavy gauge pre-cutting wire, okay? Um, you can also choose to use, oh, I like this one. This is a Lindstrom cutter. Um, this one cuts up to 12 gauge wire. I have one of these and I love it. Okay, and then for the economical people, we have the this cutter here. This one cuts up to 12 gauge. Um, I haven't used it a lot, so, because I like this one. <laughs> and I have this one before I had this one, so I'm used to the Kaba and the Lindstrom. But this is good if you don't want to spend $70 on a cutter. Okay, it'll get the job done. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut my wire to eight and a half inches. So let's get my ruler here. And we'll just go to eight and a half. And remember that the finished length is going to shrink because of the hook and the loop. Okay. So I have my wire cut. One end is kind of pointy. I'm just gonna kind of leave that because um, when I size the bracelet to fit in the end, I'll probably end up trimming it off. So I'll just leave it for now. And we'll work with the flush cut end. So the end that is flat on the end, that's the side I'm gonna work with. If there's a little bit of a pinch um, from the cutter, you can use your file. This is a large half round file. This is a regular file. And we're just gonna file it just a little. Okay. And you wanna use kind of light pressure. This file cuts really fast. Okay. And you wanna just use light pressure and kind of long, even strokes like this. And um, files like this only cut on the push. Okay, so don't stand there and rub back and forth because that is not effective. Okay, so we're just gonna file just a little bit, cutting on the push here. Okay, and I'm not pushing really hard and dragging it really hard across the wire. It's very light strokes. Okay. And all I wanna do is kind of smooth out the little pinched portion on the tip of the wire to make it kind of nicer. Okay. And when you rub your finger over it, you want it to be nice and smooth and not scratchy. Okay. Okay. 
and I'm kind of going at an angle to the edge of the wire like this. I'm not going straight across the top. I want the edges of this wire to be a little beveled so it's not very sharp and pushed down feeling. Okay, once I have that filed, I'm going to turn the loop on the end. So I'm going to make this loop here first. And I'm going to work with it while the wire is still flat. To make the loop, I get a wrap and tap plier. I'm going to use the middle step, step number two, of my small three-step wrap and tap. And to do that, we are going to just grab the very tip of the wire. You don't want it to stick out like this because you're going to get a very flat point on your loop and it's going to look more like a teardrop. If you want it to be nice and round like a lollipop, you have to grab as close to the tip as you can. And again, the plastic side is facing me. This plastic jaw is closer to me and I'm going to just grip really tightly and roll the jaw of the plier like this while bracing the wire with my left thumb. Okay, and then you're gonna release and reposition your wrap and tap and roll some more. And we're gonna do that in maybe about three or four small turns. Like this. So now I have something that resembles a little P. It's kind of leaning off to the side, right? And it's got a straight back and curve. Okay, so I want it to look more like a lollipop. Nice and centered like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna flip the wire so that the P curves towards me. And I'm gonna put the jaw of my chain nose plier inside the curve like this touching with the left edge touching where the wire touch intersects. It doesn't really intersect, it just touches the straight wire here at this point. So it's on the inside of the loop and I'm going to use my thumb to push the wire against the edge of the plier and bend this loop backwards. Okay. So like this, bend it backwards. That is not quite the shape I'm looking for, but we are getting very close. So we're gonna flip the piece so that now the loop curves away from me. And I'm just gonna roll it forward just a little. Okay, this is like making one gigantic eye pin. If this section is kind of soft and bent a little bit, curve, you can get your flat nose plier and sharpen that angle just a little by squeezing it. Like this. Okay. So that's kind of what we're going for. A centered loop on the wire. I think that looks okay. I'm gonna get my bench block. That's this. And I'm gonna straighten the wire a little bit. It's kind of curvy right now and I want it as straight as I can because I'm going to texture the um, bangle while it's flat like this. So, I'm just gonna get my nylon hammer and tap it while moving it along the length of the bench block. And what this does is it sort of straightens out the wire. Okay, so I used the plastic hammer or the nylon hammer. The nice thing about this is that it does not flatten the wire at all. All it does is sort of push it against the bench block and straightens it out. Until 
we get what we're looking for, which is a straight piece of wire, kind of nice and straight. And I'm ready to hammer my loop and start to texture the band portion of the bracelet. Okay. So when we hammer this loop here, what that will do is work hard in the metal and make it stronger. And it will also flatten the wire, give it a little bit of flare or contour or make it fancy, which is what I like. So I'm going to use my large chasing hammer here and just work on the um, loop right now. I kind of like it contoured here, so I usually make the wire wider over here and lighten up as I go around. Okay. This is 12 gauge wire, so you can hammer it quite a bit. It is rather heavy. So you can really give it some gas. Okay. All right, then I'm just going to come in with a little bit of a smaller head. Here, and kind of touch up my loop. I can see what I'm doing better with the smaller hammer because it covers up less viewing area. Okay, you notice that the loop opened up just a little bit because I did flatten the metal and what that does is it makes your shape bigger, it spreads out the wire and so it can distort the shape a little bit. So all you have to do is go back in there and maybe give it a little bit of a squeeze so it closes again or you can put the wrap and tap back in there and roll it just a little bit forward. So it's closed again. And then I'm going to texture the length of my band. I'm going to do this kind of quickly. Mm, and because we have lots of texturing hammers, I'm going to make use of several of them today in my piece. If you want to give yourself more surface area, you can choose to flatten the wire a bit, like the whole length of the wire, you can hit it with your chasing hammer and make it flat and wider so there's more surface area for your um, patterning to show, but I kind of like to keep my wire round. And I'm gonna go in with the texturing right now. So the first, texture I'm going to use is our raw silk hammer number 14. So this has a crosshatch pattern kind of carved into the face of the hammer. It makes like a texture which looks like fabric pressed into the metal. Okay so I like that and the way I like to use this one is just to hit once and hard. I don't like to hammer all over the place like I was with my smaller hammer. So let's get ready. So once and hard, like that. And that just puts a really nice kind of almost fabric type of texture into the metal. And I'm gonna space it out by about an inch and just work my way down. Like that. Okay, so I have textured sections and then I have smooth sections. And notice I'm holding the loop so that it stays flat to the surface of the table the whole time because I only want to hammer on one side of my wire, which will be the outside. Okay, so the hammered side of my loop is facing up and it stays flat and parallel to your work surface. Okay, the next texturing hammer I'm gonna use is the waffle number 22 with us. Okay, this will put a texture like little dots into the metal. And for this one, I also like to hit once and hard. Maybe not as hard as a silk. Okay, and notice that what I did was move the piece 
down along the length of the bench block as I was hammering it. So I didn't move my hammer. I kept my hammer relatively in the same location and just moved the metal where I wanted to hit it. That will help you get consistency in your hammering rather than hitting all over the place and then sometimes missing, which can happen. Okay, so. And the last texturing hammer I'm gonna use, because this one's fun, is this um, short and sharp hammer, I believe it's called. It has like a chisel shape head, actually two chisel shape heads. The nice thing about this one is it makes like very sharp lines into the metal. So I'm gonna use that to make like a kind of a cross hatch or an X pattern. Just to fill in the empty spaces on the surface of my wire. And as you're hitting it, notice that sometimes the wire likes to curve upward. Again, that's because we're spreading the metal, we're flattening it, and we're changing the shape of the wire along one side. So it just kind of wants to stretch and bend, and that is totally normal. Okay. Oh, somebody asked for, um, somebody had a question regarding cutters. You can use memory wire cutters or double flush cutters for um, cutting this 12 gauge wire. Um, you can even use hardware cutters. You don't want to use like jewelry cutters that are not rated to cut thicker or up to 12 gauge, which is really thick. There's some cutters on the market that only cut up to 22 gauge wire and you don't wanna use those because you can um, risk snapping the blade with a thicker wire like this. Uh, there's some that you know cut up to 18 and if that's all you have, don't, I wouldn't recommend using them, but if that's all you have, if you keep to the base of the blade, like way down here versus way at the tip, you'll probably be able to cut at least a few pieces of something thicker than what it's rated to cut. We just do not recommend it because it is dangerous. If you snap the blade, you can get hurt and we don't want that to happen to you. Um, but yeah, you can use memory wire cutters. You can use double flush cutters, you know, ones little snappers that look like this. Um, and the only uh, drawback to these types of cutters is kind of like the cable. The tips are really blunt. You can't get in close to anything. But if you're pre-cutting your wire, it almost does not matter at that point. So, yes, you can use memory wire cutters. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So I have my wire textured like this. Okay. And I'm going to see how long my bracelet is so far. Okay, so I started with eight and a half inches. And you notice that now my wire length is only seven and about three quarters of an inch. So this loop here ate up about three quarters of an inch of wire. So if you make that loop the same size all the time with the same gauge wire, you're gonna know in future that it eats up about three quarters of an inch of wire to make this loop here. If you make a smaller loop, obviously you'll use less, but I like to use the second step of the small three-step wrap and tap consistently, so then you know three quarters of an inch is what you will lose when you make your loop. Okay, so now my wire is about seven and three quarter. Okay, and then for the last hook, portion, you're going to eat up another quarter inch to half inch of wire. So your finished length is going to be quite a bit shorter than what you started with. Okay, 
Um, standard jewelry store bracelets with clasps that go around your wrist uh, normally are about seven and a half inches. Okay, I know that's big for like lots of people, but that's the average size. And so it looks like we're kind of on track to hit that finished length. I might be a little short, but that's okay. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to curve this around the bracelet mandrel just to get um, kind of like a, no, scratch that. I'm going to string my pearl on like this. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do because this is like stringing the pearl on here. If this were a regular gem bangle, I would curve this around the mandrel and size it to fit. So we'll do that. Okay, here is my bracelet mandrel. It looks like this. It is very big and it is very heavy because it is all steel. Okay, and I'm going to just start to make a curve around the mandrel with my wire. You wanna make sure that the textured side is facing you so it's the outside of your bangle, okay? And you can just use your fingers for this. I'm gonna use my nylon hammer just to kinda of hit it and squish that hook down just a little. So I have my preformed shape here. And then we can make sure this fits. And to size this, what we did before was you can actually push this wire through here and then trim it down to the length you want, but I'm just gonna leave it at the current length that we started with, okay? Mm. I'm gonna leave it like that. Now I'm gonna string on my pearl and see if it curves, like goes around the curve nicely. So Jason drilled these out for us and I can use either the long oval or the smaller round. <clears throat> I think I'll go with the long oval this time. Okay. <coughs> and then I'm going to just trim down the end of this wire so it's a little bit more flush. It's kind of rough right now. And because I've decided I like the length of the bangle, the way it is, I'm just gonna cut it so that it's a flush cut on the end. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> then I'm gonna straighten out the wire like this, just the end, put it on my bench block, and I'm gonna hammer it so that the end flares out. <clears throat> kind of just to make my hook look nice and stylized. Chasing hammer. And I'm hammering the inside of the bangle, the wire that's on the inside, because when I flip the hook, that will become the outside of the hook, the part that you see. And you don't have to worry about hammering it too much. You, because this is 12 gauge wire, you can really flare out the wire so it looks nice. I remember when I used to teach this as a class, like with live students. So, some people were really scared to hammer out the end of the wire. So it never really got a really nice flared or tapered look to it. <clears throat> which is okay if that's the look you're going for. I like it when it's thinner like this too, because then it's not such a thick profile when you look at it from the side. Okay, so we're kind of thinning out the end of the wire. Okay, so you concentrate on the tip of the wire like this, lighten up as you go in and you get a nice tapered effect. Okay, so it's tapered, meaning it's thin here and it gradually gets thicker. And it's also thin here and it flares out. That's kind of the look that we're going for. <clears throat> 
Now sometimes um, when you're hammering, I don't really have this problem because I hammer a lot and I've got a lot of practice so I know how to adjust while I'm hammering. But a lot of students or a lot of beginners when they first hammer, I'm gonna show you on a junk piece of wire. Um, when you first hammer, you sometimes tend to hit one side of the wire more than the other. And when you do that, <clears throat> I wanna see if I can do it. Cause I have a hard time doing it like not on purpose. Um, sometimes you hit one side of the wire more than the other, like this. Okay, can you see my wire is curving? That's because I hit it more on this side than on this side of the wire, on this edge versus this edge. So I hit it more on this edge, that's why it starts to curve away from me because that side is spreading out more and it's pushing it into a curve, your wire. Okay, so to fix that, you want to make it so that you concentrate your hitting on the inside of the curve, and then you can fix that problem. So let's see if I can fix that by just hammering it. Okay, my sample is obviously not 12 gauge wire, so it's a lot thinner, but I just wanted to give you this little demonstration of how to fix something if it's not coming out straight. So you see here, I corrected the curve when I started hammering more on this side. Okay, as long as you can diagnose why something happened, it's easy to like address the problem. So if you have to turn the wire, so now you hit it more on a different edge, then turn the wire and reposition the piece. And then you see, you can fix pretty much anything just by hammering it a little bit more in the correct places. If you just kept hitting it the same way though, that curve would have gotten even worse. So obviously you're gonna have to hit it on the other edge that wasn't getting hit enough, okay? So that is a problem solver tip for you. All right, so I have my hook here. I think I'm just about done. Mm, let me hit it just a few more times. And if this edge of the wire is sharp, it's kind of like, you know, when you run over a can in the middle of the road and it flattens, the edge is really sharp. Okay, that's what we were doing. We were running over the end. You want to smooth it out. You can use um, a couple of different files. Okay, so we have the large file. This one cuts super fast. So you want to kind of make it like you're doing your nails very light, even strokes. Okay, so we're just getting off the really sharp, bumpy edges. Like this, and we're shaping it into a nice round. Okay, and then I like to go in with a finer cut file. So this is like a really small, fine one. And I will go over the front and back edge of the hook like this. So from the front to the back and go over the edge and curve it over so it gives you a nice smooth out beveled feel. So filing is one of the things, along with hammering, is one of the things that will give your pieces a really finished look. So this is like one stage you want to take your time on and just kind of pay attention to what you're doing because it gives you a really nice clean finish, you know, and a very nice polished look. <clears throat> so we'll just go over the edge like 
this. And again, I'm filing at an angle. Can't really see it because I'm going front to back for me, but if you go from the side, it's like a 45 degree angle from the front to the back. And then you turn it over and you repeat on the other side. Okay, so somebody asked if we can make an oval bangle or you can make this as an oval bangle. And the answer is yeah, you can. Um, we do have, I'm using a round mandrel today. Okay, if you want to do oval shapes, there's a couple of things you can use to make your oval shape. First thing you can use is obviously an oval mandrel. Okay, that's one option. Another option is to shape your piece in the round. I'm gonna take this one. <clears throat> and you can actually start to just flatten sections of your circle. Usually it's this end and this end with your nylon pliers, okay? And what that will do is it will alter the shape of your round so you can make it more oval. Okay, so you can just kind of squeeze it and make it flat on this edge and then this edge and this edge here. So flatten it out and make it less curvy and then you'll get an oval shape. Although it's, sometimes it's easier just to use an oval mandrel. Okay, let me see. Okay. Uh, the silver bangles on my left wrist. Um, yeah, a lot of these are cold work. No, they're, no, they're fused, they're fused silver. So these are all um, hot work here. But yes, I made most of them. This one is a cold work, um, kind of like a bypass type of bangle. This one is done with eight gauge wire. So it's even thicker and I love it, but yeah. Okay, um, and most of these are fused 10 gauge, fine silver, I believe. So it's thicker than our bangle that we are making here. Okay. All right, let's see. Mm. All right, so I finished my hook. Now I'm just gonna flip it. I'm getting all distracted. I'm not used to this. I'm gonna curve that just a little bit here. Okay, it's a little bit trickier now that the pearl is on there. So I'm just gonna mold it around like this, okay. So I have it mostly shaped, then I'm gonna flip this hook and then we're gonna adjust the shape of our finished piece. Um, to flip the hook, I like to use the um, six step wrap and tap. You can also use a long round nose plier because we just wanna turn a hook. I like the wrap and taps because they're not tapered. So your hook is not like tilted or slanting to one side or the other because of the taper of the jaw, because these are not tapered. So I'm gonna use step number three. I'm gonna grab not quite the tip of the wire because I do want a little bit of a flat portion on my hook. So I'm leaving maybe a couple of millimeters out, sticking out here and I'm just gonna roll away. Kind of like how we were making the eye pin in the beginning. Okay, so I just turned my hook. And we'll just make sure that it hooks shut. Here we go. And all we need to do now pretty much is to adjust the shape of the bracelet. Okay, and how do we do that? You can do that a couple different ways. One way I like to do the adjusting, especially when there's something on the bracelet itself, is to put it back on the bench block and kind of squeeze. I'm applying pressure and squeezing the bracelet and just kind of hit it on the bench block like this. Okay, clean up my work area just a little. This will be really good if your piece got very wonky and like wavy while we were working with it. 
And then you're gonna have to move the pearl around so it's out of your way when you're hitting. Okay, and I'm just gonna turn it over and hit this edge. So notice I'm doing most of my shaping on a flat surface. I did very little of it around the mandrel itself. Um, you can put it on the mandrel and make the edges a little bit, like your curves a little bit softer if you want. But the um, one of the reasons why we did a lot of the hammering on the bench block is the texturing I find is easier for beginners to do with your piece flat rather than it on a round mandrel. The reason why we have the steel mandrels is because it gives you the option to hammer on it and put texture and do everything we were doing on the bench block on the mandrel itself. Um, it just gets a little bit challenging when um, you know there's like a pearl or something on there because it's not truly round inside the bangle anymore. Okay, so that's why we started to um, teach this with the bench block starting and for most of it, okay? <clears throat> but if you wanna get on the mandrel itself, you can. You're gonna have to go up a, a bit higher than where your pearl is. Okay, and then again, you're gonna squeeze and we can just tap it a little bit to give it a nice curve. And if you want to make it a little bit more rounded and it's if it's looking a little pointy up here, we can use our nylon draw pliers or if you have a curved nylon draw plier, you can use that to adjust the shape as well. Okay, I'm going to bend this just a little bit so it sits a little bit flatter. Okay, I think we are almost there. Does anybody else have any questions? So when you're just about done with your piece, a couple of things you want to check is that your hook can open and close fairly easily, but it stays shut when you hook it shut. You want there to be a little bit of tension here, so when you open it, it should spring open just a little. So when you press it to hook it shut, it'll stay closed because there's that tension between that hook and the loop. Okay. Yeah, it would be a really cool color. So the nice thing about this too is that you um, can actually just put it on like this. So for those of you who have like really big hands but very small wrists, this style is really good for you because you can make the bangle actually fit your wrist and it can be smaller than what you would normally need for it to go over your hand because you know, most closed bangles or soldered bangles, they have to fit over the widest part of your hand. Whereas this one, because it opens, you don't need to have it go over there so you can have your bracelets better fitted to your wrist. Okay, well that fits. 
and I think we're good here. So um, if you want to polish this up, <clears throat> we do have polishing cloths like this if you want to make it shiny. Then we have polishing pads and stuff like that, you know. But what I like to do is throw our bangles in the tumbler for anywhere from 45 minutes to a few hours because what that will do is it will slightly harden your um, bangles some more and it'll get them really nice and clean and very shiny. But here, this is a bang up job of making it shiny. Okay, here we go. So there we have it. I do have my finished bangle here and it somewhat fits me. <laughs> which I am happy with. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the barrel for our tumbler. We're gonna throw the bangle in the tumbler and then we'll send, a, we'll post a picture on our Facebook page to show you what the finished piece looks like after it's all clean and shiny. Okay. But this is our tumbler. It is a rubber barreled tumbler. And it comes, the ones that we sell, comes with two pounds of Jason's special mix of steel shot. Okay. His mix is awesome because he doesn't have any of those annoying pin shapes that get stuck in everything in his mix like you might see in other mixes or other types of shot that you might see online. Jason only picks the rounds, the ellipses, and the cut cylinders. Okay, so there's about two pounds of shot in here. And the way you use this is you just pop in your jewelry. And yes, you can tumble pearls. You can tumble shells. You can tumble pretty much any gemstone out there. Uh, maybe stay away from the really, really soft ones like malachite, um, you know, fluorite, angelite, stuff like that. You don't want to um, tumble those for too long because they are soft. But like most stones, quartzes, amethyst, anything out there like that, crystals, glass, uh, pearls, shell, you can throw these all in the tumbler. And what it does is these little pieces of shot act like mini hammers and they burnish your metal to a high shine. So you would throw it in here and you would fill up the water You'd fill this up with water only to cover pretty much the top of the shot. So it's not filling the whole barrel. Then you put like a couple of drops of regular dishwashing liquid like Dawn. Um, I use palm olive because that's what I have. Um, but anything, you know, just very basic. And so you'd put a couple of drops of that and maybe a couple of squirts of um, Quick Bright, which is an enzyme cleaner to get your metal nice and shiny. And then you would load up your tumbler and cover it like this um there are other tumblers on the market that have like plastic barrels i would not recommend those because i heard those are very noisy the rubber barrels sound like a washing machine it's very quiet um plastic barrels not so quiet so if you uh are not able to hide away your tumbler in a very quiet spot away from you then I would say get the rubber barrel tumbler. Okay, so you put the lid on like so, washer, and then you got your little screw. We're gonna screw that shut. Okay, I didn't put in the water, so obviously I'm not gonna tumble it right now, but I'm just showing you how to assemble the barrel. Okay, and then it goes on the barrel, it goes on the base, and it will tumble and spin for mm, anywhere from 45 minutes to a couple hours is good. Um, I would say if you have things that are a little bit softer that you wanna clean but you don't want to um, risk damaging, do it for shorter periods of time like 15 to 20 minute intervals and just check your pieces, okay? It gets stuff really clean and shiny really fast. Um, you also don't wanna throw in prong set stuff because the you can knock the prongs out of alignment. Yes, you can tumble pearls and shells and glass okay what this this tumbler can also be used to um, polish like rocks and stuff i think that's what 
it's a, sold as a lot of the time it's marketed as a rock polisher and you can do that with this tumbler you just will not be using the steel shot that's in here you're going to use a totally different media to tumble rocks and stuff and make them shiny but it's the same equipment different stuff inside the barrel okay so we're going to tumble that and then we're going to get it really shiny and we're going to post our picture on Facebook I think and I think that's about it for my demonstration today so hold on I'm gonna come back and say bye to everybody <laughs> okay so that was my demonstration on how to do a gem bangle I hope you will try it it was really I hope I made it look pretty easy um, it's not so easy for your first one if you want to do it with a bead on there so I would recommend trying to just shape it by itself first without anything on it so you can get a really nice round shape and then you can go crazy and then stick all you want on the bracelet itself and the reason why we had to um, get the pearl on there before we turn the hook was obviously because once you turn the hook the pearl is stuck on there okay so that I kind of recommend you try this is really fun you can put all kinds of charms all kinds of gems on there um, and I hope you'll try it because it is one of the projects where you don't have to do a lot of intricate small motions this is very just like big loops big hook and a lot of hammering and filing it's really fun to do and it's nice when you wear a stack of them so I hope you'll give it a try if you like this video and you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to our channel. Like the video, please. And then you can also hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notifications the next time we go live. We do try to do these little um, demonstrations and mini classes at least once or twice a week. So if you hit the notification button, you'll know when we come on next and you can watch us again. So I really would like to thank you all for joining me today. I had fun showing you how to do a gem bangle. If you need to watch the original video from many, many moons ago, it is somewhere here on our YouTube channel. You can see our friend Amanda, who we haven't seen for a while, but she is fun to watch in her um, version of the gem bangle that we did at Ward a long time ago. So if you want to hint of nostalgia go see that video too okay um and i think that wraps it up for today remember to live love and create and have a wonderful wonderful evening aloha